For generations, bamboo has been utilized in a variety of uses by communities throughout the world. India is the second richest country in bamboo genetic resources after China. India is blessed with a very rich bamboo diversity with about 23 genera and 136 species. Bamboos are aptly called the poor man's timber. Their strength, straightness and lightness combined with hardness, range in sizes, abundance, easy propagation and the short period in which they attain maturity make them suitable for a wide range of utility. Bamboo Technical Support Group of the Indian Council of Forestry Research and Education, the BTSG ICFRE Dehradun, with fund support from the National Bamboo Mission Government of India, has taken up the systematic research on bamboo under its various research institutes at different agroecological regions of the country. One such important multi-use bamboo species is Dendrocalamus toxi. This is a common visual in the rivers of coastal Karnataka, Goa and the Konkan region of Maharashtra. The long pole used to row the boat is Dendrocalamus toxi. Dendrocalamus toxi, which also has a synonym Oxytenantheras toxi or pseudo oxytenantheras toxi, is naturally distributed in central western Ghats. This species is endemic to central western Ghats and is found in Karnataka, Goa, Kerala and Maharashtra. The local names of this species are Shivari, Mess in Maharashtra, Konda, Ursime, Marihal Bidru in Karnataka and Manga in Goa and the Konkan area. It is cultivated in the coastal belts of Karnataka, Goa and Maharashtra. Though the natural distribution of this species is in humid tropics with latritic soil type, this species has a wide adaptability to tropical humid, subhumid and semi-arid conditions. This uh, species is as of now not reported from wild. Uh, only they are found on the uh, home gardens of people as a life fence or as a one particular clump in the household. Dendrocalamus toxi is considered as an important agroforestry species ideal for plantations in watershed and coastal regions. It is planted as a component of home gardens or as block plantations. Dendrocalamus toxi is an extremely manageable species with great economic and ecological importance and a large-scale utilization potential. This species is preferred by the bamboo growers and users because of its non-thorny nature loosely spaced culms which facilitates easy management. It is used in handicrafts as components of various agricultural implements and in a range of other utilities. As an alternate to the scarcity of cane or rattan, this species is seen as a viable substitute in furniture industry due to its solid nature, non-predominant nodes and a good culm wall thickness. Institute of Wood Science and Technology, IWST, a specialized institute of the Indian Council of Forestry Research and Education, has been working on this species since the past one decade and has standardized its macro and micro propagation protocol. Dendrocalamus toxi has medium sized, stout solid, and strong culms. We can identify this with its culm, culm sheath, leaf, branching habit and flowering. This species has similar characteristics of Dendrocalamus strictus. Younger saplings of both species look almost the same. But later in the growth, we can see differences in straightness, culm spacing and canopy. Stoxi culms attain a height of about 9 meters with a basal diameter ranging from 25 to 58 millimeters 
with an internode length of 15 to 30 centimeters. The mature culm is smooth and without hairs as compared to young culms which are covered with dense white or grey deciduous closely matted fine hairs. The culms are light green, loosely spaced and thornless. The culms are usually solid at the base up to 6th or 7th node and even up to more than half the culm height unlike culms of other bamboo species. The hollowness may be more pronounced towards the tip of the culm. The culm sheath is 15 to 22 centimeters long and 17 to 17 centimeters broad, straighted and silvery. The leaves are 10 to 20 centimeters long and 1 to 2 centimeters broad, linear lanceolate and rounded or attenuated at the base with a short petiole. Self-pruning is noticed in the lower portion of the culm up to 5th or 6th node from the base. This species usually has a sporadic flowering pattern. The inflorescence of the Dendrochlamus stocksi is a large panicle with sessile, closely packed spinous spikelets. Very low pollen viability and low germination have been observed in the species. Due to poor seed setting, and non-gregarious nature of this bamboo, genetic diversity could be highly restricted and continuous vegetative propagation from a narrow genetic base could have serious implication for conservation of the species. IWST has set up Germplasm Bank through collection of genotypes across the range of its natural distribution from Kasargod in Kerala to Ratnagiri in Maharashtra to capture the diversity of this highly endemic species. Southernmost point of Central Western Ghats from Kasargod in Kerala up to uh, Ratnagiri in Maharashtra. We have surveyed the entire region and we have collected close to 102 genotypes with the biometric uh, observations and also the GPS markings. That we have uh, laid out as multi-locational trials in Honavar, Dapoli in Maharashtra and then in Hoskote in Bangalore. Macro and micro propagation assumes importance in this species since seed setting is almost nil. Offset planting is the traditional, easy and most common method of planting in Dendrochlamus stocksi. In this method, one-year-old culms are cut through with a slant cut about 90 to 120 centimeters from the ground and the rhizomes to which they are attached are dug up with the roots intact and cut off to a length sufficient to include a well-developed bud, a growing point, along with a culm remnant which is called as offset. These offsets are planted at sufficient depth to cover two to three nodes at desired spacing, usually five into five meters with the onset of monsoon. New shoots appear in the first or second season. It takes about four to five seasons for good-sized culms to develop. Double and triple noded culm cuttings containing dormant buds are collected from one to two-year-old culms of a healthy clump. February to March is ideal for extracting culms for macro propagation. Cuttings can be made from entire culm from basal region to top. Cuttings would be collected in the morning hours. Dormant bud is most essential. Until unless dormant bud is not there, the new suit will not come out. The cuttings are treated with 2500 ppm IBA in powder form or in solutions as pulse treatment and laid horizontally in 1 into 5 meter sand beds covered with 2 cm of sand layer and watered regularly. The beds are covered with 50% shade net to avoid drying of the cuttings. After placing the cuttings in sand beds, the cuttings sprout in 10 to 15 days and rooting is completed in 45 to 60 days depending on ambient temperature. The rooted plants are scooped from the culm and then transferred to poly bags. Plants with two to three tillers and well-developed miniature rhizomes are ready in six months for outplanting. A single node cutting may be of one and a half to two centimeter in length. 
remove the seed from our nodal segment, make the pieces ideal 1.5 to 2.5 centimeter in length and then single segment is inoculated or put into culture medium and test tube. You can get more overlays of this type of suits and once the number of suits are sufficient then the suits are 2 to 3 suits used in the form of clump put on a rooting medium. For getting plantable plant it takes 5 months time in which 4 to 5 suits or tillers induce miniature idome is produced. We have produced several thousand plants. Multilocational field trials of Dendrocalamus toxi along with other bamboo species have been tried out in various locations across different agroclimatic zones in Peninsula India by IWST and the growth monitored for at least five years. Among these genotypes we have noticed that around uh, 30 of them are having solidness even up to more than 50%. Uh, so these are the ones and also with a diameter of greater than 40 millimeter, uh, they are the ones which we feel will be uh, having industrial uh, importance and also commercial viability in the future. The comparative growth performance in various locations indicate that this species performs well in tropical humid, subhumid and also reasonably well under managed conditions in semi-arid regions. In India as you know that uh, more than 60% of the agriculture lands uh, coming under this semi-arid conditions and this is one species that can be in integrated into existing farming practice or at least on farm boundaries. In commercial cultivation, because of its specific culm characteristics like erect nature, less number of side branches, solid nature with small culm diameter, this species can be grown at higher density per hectare. The recommended spacing for this species is usually 4 into 4 meters and a pit size of 60 cubic centimeters which is sufficient for initial planting. Irrigating clumps in post-monsoon period for initial two years helps in early clump establishment and reducing casualty. Each clump may be supplemented with 100 grams nitrogen, 50 grams phosphorus, 50 grams potassium along with 5 kg of compost for initial three years and the same dose repeated after every annual harvest of mature culms. We are distributing this uh, uh, bamboo to the farmers and the Krushi Arana Prosa Yojane. So there is a good response. Pach Mahina Purvi Lavalila Bamboo. Ata Tela Satal Putwe Alila Hit. When the Pudja would hit it, Dhatevis Putwe Taratar Huti. Krushi Arana Prosa Yojane and bamboo mission, we are raising these uh, seedlings. Bamboo culms are ready for harvest from the clump at the end of four years, depending on the type of planting material, species and management. The culms may be harvested every year from the fifth year onwards. One-year-old immature culms are not recommended for harvest. At least two years maturity of culms is advisable. It is recommended to retain 50% of matured culms in the clump so that they can support the emergence of fresh young shoots. The best time for felling or culm extraction is from November to May. Extraction during monsoon is to be avoided as it is in the growing phase of emerging culms. This species forms an integral part of home gardens and is usually preferred as boundary plantations in farms, especially along the west coast. Attempts have been made to incorporate Dendrocalamus toxi along with agricultural crops, especially in the upland agricultural system in humid tropics along the western ghats. National Bamboo Mission has prioritized this species for large scale cultivation in Peninsula India. Mangaha Garibala Srimanta Karanara Kwa Bikshadishala Lakshadish Karanari Shunya Vasta Panatli Vanas Patiahi. Egg Bank Ar was any Shambaraki Dun Shubati. Parantu ha bambuzahi Varsala Ekwadun as the Utpan Muto Mizala Muraita Temule. पन्नास रुपये जर किमत असली तर 100 रुपये एका बांबू पासून उत्पन्न मिळू शकतो सजित का धंदा बायला व्यवहार जातो कोणतो धंदो करतो हे काय काय विलो ते टाइम पर मी बसतो चौथीला ही सुपा करतो चतुर्थीला त्याच्यानंतर खूप करतो लोक 
सगळे कामचे लोक करतात मानगे हाडले तर आम्ही धन्य करतो हे नाहीतर आम्ही घरी बसून असतो धन्य नाही मानगे नाही ते बांबू नाही मिळले तर आम्ही धन्य करत नाही ए टी एम सारखा पैसा द्या वनस्पतीतून मिळतो आहे विना तक्रार विना टेन्शन The rural economy of some of the villages like the Ovi village near Savantwadi are largely dependent on Dendrocalamus toxi. Dendrocalamus toxi is considered as a potential bamboo species which can be commercially cultivated by farmers and has a high demand in the furniture industry. Commercial plantations of this species may be highly viable if it can be raised with appropriate scientific management practices. We are distributing this uh, uh, bamboo to the farmers and the krushi are in a prosa yojane. So there is a good response. The peak bagunat amala samadhan hai, paisa kiti bhi yehudhe, paisa ye na roj, karna hai saru paisa chi dhadhe lao lalia hai. Krushi are in a prosa yojane. and bamboo mission we are raising this uh, seedlings from a commercial plantation potential revenue of rupees 2.2 lakhs in the 5th year and around 4.5 lakh per year from the 6th year onwards can be expected from 5630 culms after accounting 10% mortality of the clumps over a 40 year period of plantation an annual net income of 2.2 to 2.7 lakhs can be reasonably expected everywhere uh, the cashew and mango is not possible because of the layer of the soil and uh, other factors also responsible for that uh, by considering this uh, the overall uh, bamboo cultivation is nice The harvested culms may be trimmed to get poles of 20 feet length which are readily sold at the rate of rupees 80 to 100 per culm. In recent times, the culms appear to have a ready market in the bamboo and cane based furniture industry. Lot of innovative designs have been made possible in household furniture by the Konkan Bamboo and Cane Center Konbak. based in kodal sindhudurg district maharashtra dendroclamus toxi is one of the best available bamboo for furniture we have spent lot of time to improve and now we are extremely happy with the result ela ata jawal pas 4 te 5 varsha jhali ani yachavar 4 5 pavsale yeun gele pan konta hi problem ata paryant tari alela nahi hai ani yacha tasa life bagayla gele tar 25 varsha ahe asa matla jata other players in the market include bamboo pecker martahalli bangalore and ngos like uravu vayanad who also utilize dendrocalamus toxi in a substantial way the national institute of design bangalore has also come out with some innovative designs in household furniture using dendrocalamus toxi Bamboo traditionally considered as the poor man's timber in India is now under consideration as a major export item by the government of India for a global market valued at rupees 500 billion cultivation of bamboo species like dendrocalamus toxi can open new avenues of income generation livelihood and employment this can also be a complementary action towards conserving our natural forests by reducing pressure for collection of cane and other wild species